Today we're going to talk about mental illness solutions. Let's first look at some statistics. Mental health is becoming a bigger concern in America. More people are facing anxiety, depression, and other mental illnesses than ever before. These issues are affecting millions of Americans and need urgent attention. Almost 23% of adults in the United States dealt with mental illness in 2021, and that is what was officially measured. This does not include the reality of what is happening in the living room at home, classrooms, and in schools. At the university, we are working on psychopathology globally. Psychopathology is the study of mental illness. It includes the signs and symptoms of all mental disorders. It's the same all around the world, not just in your car or restaurant down the street. Of the measured statistics here locally in the United States, this means about 60 million people struggled with their mental health that year. Every year, about 26% of adults are officially diagnosed with some form of mental disorder. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues. Around 18% of the people aged 18 to 54 have an anxiety disorder each year. Some forms of anxiety, like generalized anxiety disorder, affect 6.8 million adults, which is about 3.1% of the population. Social anxiety disorder impacts about 15 million adults, or 7.1% of the people in the U.S. This shows how widespread the anxiety is in everyday life. Depression is also a serious concern. In 2021, 8.3% of Americans had a major depressive episode. This included 6% of men and 10% of women. Every year, about 9.5% of adults in the U.S. suffer from some form of depressive illness. Alarmingly, one in five young people had a major depressive episode in the past year. This shows how mental health issues are affecting younger generations more than ever before. But then again, we are measuring it better. But then again, why aren't we doing something about it? Certain groups are more likely to experience mental illness. Young adults, especially those aged 18 to 25, have the highest rates of mental illness. In 2021, 33.7% of people in this age group reported mental health issues. Women are almost twice as likely to suffer from a major depression compared to men. Data from October 2023 showed that 32.7% of women and 244 of men reported anxiety symptoms, while 23.3% of women and 21.6% of men reported depression symptoms. Substance use is also closely linked to mental health problems. I know about that. It's part of my distant past. It's part of my journey. I also know that I'm not alone, so I won't ask if I'm alone. About 18% of adults in the U.S. had a substance use disorder in the past year, but 77% of them did not get the treatment they needed. I know I didn't, but God is good, I was set free. Among youth, 9% had a substance use disorder, which highlights the need for better support and treatment. One of the most worrying statistics is about suicide. Over 5% of adults, or 12.8 million people, had serious thoughts of suicide. Among youth aged 12 to 17, 13% reported having suicidal thoughts. This shows that young people are at high risk for mental health issues. The numbers surrounding anxiety, depression, and mental illness in America are alarming. Many other people are not included in these numbers like the homeless I minister to every Sunday morning out in the streets. But I see it. It's real. With so many people affected, it's important to raise awareness, reduce stigma, and make mental health resources more available. Several weeks ago, I shared specific mental health resources in Western Massachusetts. 
and it can be found on my website, bravehearted413.com. Addressing mental health is not just a personal issue, but also a public health priority. The well-being of individuals, families, and communities depend on it. Do I hear an amen? Now, the Bible has stories that we learn a lot from. The Bible has many, many stories about people who face mental health challenges, even though the words they used back then sound different from what we use today. One of the most famous figures is King David. Throughout his life, David showed signs of feeling very sad and anxious. In the Psalms, which are poems and songs he wrote, he shared his deep feelings of sorrow and fear. For example, in Psalms 6, verse 6 through 7, he says, I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with my tears. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. This shows how much he struggled with his emotions. Another important figure is Elijah, a prophet who had a big victory against the prophets of Baal. But after that, he faced a tough time. He ran away from Queen Jezebel, who wanted to harm him, and he felt so overwhelmed that he asked God to end his life. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4, he says, It is enough now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. This statement reveals how deeply he was suffering and feeling hopeless. Job is another example of someone who went through extreme mental and emotional pain. In the book of Job, we learn about his many losses, including his family, health, and wealth. He felt hopeless and in despair, showing us that even good people can struggle with their mental health. In Job chapter 3, verse 11, he says, Why did I not die at birth? Why did I not perish when I came from the womb? Job's words show the depth of his sorrow and suffering. Then there's uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, who faced a serious mental crisis. This event, often referred to as Nebuchadnezzar's madness, provides an intriguing historical and theological account of mental illness in ancient times. In the book of Daniel, it describes how he lost his mind and lived like an animal for a while, to make a long story short. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 33, it says, He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like birds and claws. This story suggests he may have suffered from something like a severe mental illness. The Bible doesn't use the same terms we do today for mental health, but it still talks about emotional struggles. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28, the Bible mentions mental affliction, saying, the Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of heart. This shows that the people in biblical times recognize these challenges. The Bible often looks at health as a whole, including physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. It offers comfort to those who are feeling anxious or troubled, encouraging them to talk to God about their worries. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Importantly, the Bible highlights the importance of community and support for those who are having a tough time emotionally. It suggests that people should help each other when they are struggling. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. While the Bible provides spiritual guidance and comfort, it also acknowledges that seeking professional help is very important. Yes, that's right, professional help. So many people today, including uh, Christians, understand that Having both faith and professional support can be valuable when dealing with mental health challenges. Overcoming anxiety, depression, and other mental challenges is not an easy journey. However, the Bible offers wisdom and comfort that can help us navigate these struggles with faith and hope. One of the most beautiful parts of Scripture is how it speaks to our hearts in moments of fear, uncertainty, and sorrow. The principles found in the Word of God, which is the Bible, provides us 
with strength, encouragement, and direction. Let's explore some of these biblical truths that can guide us through tough times and bring peace to our troubled minds. Now, first, we're going to be understanding the role of the Bible and the role of reading the Bible, prayer, and fasting as it relates to mental health. Now, mental health is an important part of a person's overall well-being, and many people turn to spiritual practices for support. Bible reading, prayer, and fasting are three key practices in our faith that can bring comfort, peace, and strength in difficult times. These practices, while spiritually enriching, are not substitutes for professional mental health care, but they can work alongside treatment to help individuals find hope and peace. By turning to the Bible, spending time in prayer, and fasting with a focus on God, many of us find a sense of calm and purpose that supports our mental well-being. Let's talk about Bible reading. Now, Bible reading is often described as a source of strength and wisdom, especially in times of trouble. The Bible contains many promises of peace, hope, and comfort that can help those who are struggling with mental health issues. For example, in Psalms 119 verse 105, where it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This verse reminds us that the Bible can guide us when we feel lost or unsure about what to do next. It gives us direction and helps us make choices that lead us to peace. Many people find comfort in reading the Psalms, which express a wide range of emotions like joy, fear, sadness, and hope. In Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. This, this verse reminds us that God is close to those who are hurting, and he offers his healing presence when we turn to him. No matter how difficult life feels, God's love and support are always available through his word. When reading the Bible, believers often feel a deep connection with God. They know that he understands our struggles and is ready to offer help. This connection brings comfort and peace, especially when life feels overwhelming. The Bible shows us that we are never alone in our troubles and that God is always with us, offering love, strength, and wisdom to guide us through any challenge. Now let's talk about prayer. Another important verse is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, which says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. These words offer reassurance to those who feel overwhelmed by anxiety. By turning to God in prayer, we are encouraged to give our worries to Him, knowing that He will provide peace that goes beyond what we can understand. This peace can help to calm our minds and reduce stress, allowing us to face challenges with a sense of trust in God's plan. The Bible also encourages believers to trust in God's plan, even when life feels uncertain or difficult. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5-6 through six says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. When dealing with mental health challenges, it can be difficult to make sense of our emotions and experiences. This verse reminds us to rely on God's wisdom and trust that he is guiding us even when we don't fully understand what is happening. Many people find that trusting in God's plan brings a sense of peace, allowing them to let go of worry and focus on the present moment. Prayer, as mentioned in, the, in Philippians, is a key spiritual practice that can bring support for mental health. Through prayer, we communicate with God, sharing our fears, hopes, and challenges. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. This verse encourages believers to bring worries and concerns to God. That's right. 
This verse encourages believers to bring worries and concerns to God, trusting that He listens and cares deeply for each of us. In times of mental distress, prayer can be a way to release negative emotions and find comfort in knowing that God is present and watching over us. The act of praying itself can help calm the mind by creating a moment of stillness and reflection. It allows us to step away from the chaos of life and focus on God. By praying, we remind ourselves that we are not alone in our struggles. This connection with God gives us strength and helps us trust that He will provide guidance and peace even when life feels overwhelmed. Prayer is a powerful tool for finding comfort and hope, especially when we feel lost or uncertain about what to do next. Now let's talk about fasting. Fasting is another spiritual practice that can support mental well-being by helping us focus on our relationship with God. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This verse shows that spiritual nourishment is more important than physical needs. Fasting can help clear the mind and focus more on prayer and scripture, allowing for a deeper connection with God. By temporarily setting aside physical needs, believers may find that they can hear God's voice more clearly and gain a new perspective on their lives. It is important to note that fasting should be done carefully, especially for those with a history of eating disorders or other mental health concerns. Fasting is not about punishing the body, but more about creating space for spiritual growth. Isaiah 58, 6, that's chapter 58, verse 6, it says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? This passage reminds us that fasting is meant to bring freedom and healing both spiritually and mentally. When approached with the right mindset, fasting helps helps all of us focus on God's love. Yes, it helps us focus on God's love and care, freeing us from the burdens. That's right, we're freeing us from the burdens that weigh on our hearts and minds. While Bible reading, prayer, and fasting offer important spiritual support, it is also essential for individuals facing mental health challenges to seek professional help when needed. Now, as I said a few weeks ago, I shared specific resources for professional help, including websites, and that's on my website, braveheartedfour13.com. Now, many people struggle with anxiety, depression, or other mental health conditions, and it is important to recognize that God has provided many resources to help us, including mental health professionals. Proverbs 11:14 says, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safe safety. Seeking professional help is not a sign of weakness, but rather a way to receive the care and guidance that God has made available to us. I'll say that again. Seeking professional help is not a sign of weakness, but rather a way to receive the care and guidance that God has made available to us. In Romans chapter 12 verse 2 offers a powerful message for those seeking mental and emotional renewal where it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This verse reminds us that mental renewal comes from focusing on God's truth rather than the worries of the world. By turning to God and seeking his wisdom through the Bible, reading prayer and fasting, individuals can experience a transformation of minds, allowing us to see our circumstances in a new light. So basically, Bible reading, prayer, and fasting are powerful tools that can provide support and strength during times of mental distress. 
These practices help us connect with God, find comfort in His promises, and gain perspective on our struggles. The Bible offers many words of hope and encouragement for those who are feeling anxious or overwhelmed, reminding us that God is always near, ready to listen and provide peace. Through prayer, we can release our worries to God, knowing that He cares deeply for us and will provide the guidance we need. Fasting, when done with the right mindset, can help us focus on God's love and care, allowing us to experience spiritual renewal. While these practices are spiritually enriching, they are not meant to replace professional mental health care. Instead, they can complement professional treatment, offering emotional support and a sense of purpose that strengthens mental well-being. By combining these spiritual disciplines with the care of mental health professionals, we can find hope, healing, and peace in our journey towards mental health. And that is true. The stigma surrounding mental illness within many Christian communities remains a pressing issue that requires urgent attention and education. For too long, individuals grappling with mental health struggles have been led to believe that their challenges signify spiritual failure or a lack of faith, like a ship lost in a storm adrift without direction. To foster a more compassionate and understanding environment, it's essential to educate ourselves on the complexities of mental health. It's very much like a gardener nurturing not just the flowers, but the roots to ensure true growth. A comprehensive Christian approach to mental well-being should encompass the entirety of a person, body, mind, and spirit. Just as a house stands firm when its foundation is solid, our well-being requires balance in all areas of life. This holistic perspective might include professional treatment from a mental health practitioner medication when necessary, and ongoing counseling, which are like tools used to rebuild a home after a storm. However, it should also integrate spiritual practices such as prayer, Bible study, and participation in a supportive church community that nurtures both emotional and spiritual health, much like sunlight and water nurture a plant's growth. It's vital for we as Christians facing mental health challenges to find solace in the belief that God is present with, with us in our suffering. The Bible reminds us in Psalms 34, 18, the Lord is close to those brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. This shows that God walks with us through the darkest valleys, much like a shepherd guiding lost sheep back to safety. The notion that mental illness equates to divine abandonment or a deficiency in faith is not misguided but harmful. Romans chapter 8 verse 38 through 39 tells us, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. This verse confirms that no illness, physical or mental, can remove us from God's love just as no storm can stop the sun from rising again. By encouraging open conversations about mental health and promoting understanding within the church, we can dismantle stigma and create an environment where individuals feel safe to seek help. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14 says, where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in the abundance of counselors, there is victory. Seeking help through counseling is not a sign of weakness, but a step toward healing and strength, like a warrior seeking the wisdom of elders before heading into battle. It is through this journey of education and compassion that we can truly embody the love and grace that our faith teaches. In John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus commands us to love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Let us ensure that all believers know they are neither alone nor unworthy in our struggles, just as a lighthouse, certainly just as a lighthouse provides a guiding light for ships in the night.
Now here's a list of solutions to address mental health challenges framed from a biblical Christian perspective with relevant scriptures. Number one, seek professional counseling. The scripture, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. That's Proverbs 11:14. The solution, engage with licensed therapists or counselors who are knowledgeable about mental health and sensitive to biblical teachings. Number two, medication management. The scripture, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. That comes from Proverbs 17, 22. The solution, consult healthcare professionals regarding the appropriate use of medication as part of managing your mental health. Number three, prayer and meditation. The scripture, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And that's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The solution, dedicate time each day for prayer and meditation, inviting God into your struggles. And number four, Bible study. The scripture, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That's in Psalms 119, verse 105. The solution, engage with scripture regularly to find encouragement, guidance, and comfort. Number five, a supportive community. The scripture, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That is in Galatians 6 verse 2. The solution, surround yourself within your church community that provides understanding, support, and encouragement. Number six, education and awareness the scripture my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge that's in hosea chapter 4 verse 6. the solution participate in educational initiatives within your church our church to promote understanding and to reduce stigma surrounding mental health number seven healthy lifestyle choices the scripture or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? And that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. The solution, prioritize regular exercise, balanced nutrition, and adequate sleep to honor your body and promote overall well-being. And number eight, mindfulness practices. The scripture, be still and know that I am God. And that's in Psalm 46.10. The solution, practice mindfulness techniques such as in deep breathing or Bible journaling, prayer journaling, to cultivate awareness and find peace. Volunteering and acts of service. Volunteering and acts of service. The scripture, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. And that is in 1st of Peter, chapter 4, verse 10. The solution, engage in community service to foster a sense of purpose and connection with others. And number 10, open conversations. The scripture, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. That's in Proverbs 27, 17. The solution, foster open discussions about mental health within our church to support and uplift each other and one another. Number 11, spiritual retreats. The scripture, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. That's a Mark chapter six, verse 31. The solution, attend retreats, focus on spiritual renewal and mental wellness to recharge your spirit. Number 12, creative expression. The scripture, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's in Psalms 139.14. The solution, use creative outlets like art, music, or writing to process emotions and express your feelings. Number 13, accountability partners. The scripture, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. That's right, that's in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. The solution, find a trusted friend or mentor to provide mutual support and accountability. Number 14, 
limit social media exposure. The scripture, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. That's in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. The solution, be mindful of your social media consumption and its impact on your mental health. And number 15, seek God's guidance. The scripture, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without reproach. That's in James chapter 1, verse 5. The solution, regularly seek God's guidance in prayer, trusting in his presence and support through your challenges. By embracing these solutions within a biblical framework, we can navigate mental health challenges. We can all do that. We do it with faith and hope, knowing that God walks alongside us in every step of our journey. Thank you for joining me.